May 9th, 1941. German sailors plunge into the frigid waters of the North Atlantic as they abandon U-110, battered by British depth charges after an attack on an Allied convoy went badly wrong. Aboard HMS Bulldog, the crew watches the scene unfold with mounting excitement. They recognize a rare opportunity, the chance to capture a German U-boat, and any secrets contained within her belly. As Sub-Lieutenant David Baum and his boarding party clamber aboard, the submarine shifts ominously under their feet. They know they're in a race against time. The damaged U-boat could slip beneath the waves at any moment. Instead, Baum and his team work feverishly. They grab documents, charts, and anything that looks important, acutely aware that each passing second could be their last aboard the failing submarine. Suddenly, in the radio room, telegraphist Alan Long makes a startling discovery. Nestled among the tangle of dials and wires, a strange-looking device catches his eye. Its brass key is gleaming in the dim light, reminiscent of a typewriter, yet somehow alien. He doesn't know what it is, but with time running out, he decides to take it anyway. As Long rushes to get the enigmatic device back to HMS Bulldog, He's unaware of the true magnitude of his find. In his hands, he holds not just a piece of equipment, but a key that could unlock the entire German naval code, and potentially alter the course of the war itself. The Enigma Machine, a marvel of cryptography, was the key to Germany's dominance in the Battle of the Atlantic in the early years of World War II. This complex electromechanical device could scramble letters in millions of different combinations, creating codes thought to be unbreakable. With its intricate system of rotors and plug boards, the Enigma became the backbone of German military communications, used for coordinating U-boat attacks on Allied convoys with devastating effect. By early 1941, the situation for Allied shipping in the Atlantic had become desperate. Vessels were being sunk faster than they could be replaced, pushing Britain to the brink of starvation and defeat. Unable to crack the Enigma Code, the Allies were fighting a losing battle against an invisible enemy, their convoys like blindfolded boxers swinging helplessly at an opponent who could anticipate their every move. As supplies dwindled and the fate of the entire Allied war effort hung in the balance, breaking the seemingly impenetrable Enigma Code became paramount. In the midst of this critical struggle emerged an unlikely hero, HMS Bulldog. A B-class destroyer built between 1929 and 1931, Bulldog had already seen her fair share of action by 1941. Notably, in June 1940, she participated in Operation Cycle, the evacuation of British troops from Le Havre, in which she narrowly made it back to port after being badly damaged by German aircraft. As the Battle of the Atlantic intensified, she was swiftly repaired and assigned to the dangerous but vital role of convoy escort duty under the command of Captain Joe Baker Cresswell as part of the 3rd Escort Group. These escort groups were the first line of defense against the enemy's submarine threat, using a combination of ASDIC sonar systems to detect submerged U-boats and depth charges to attack them. In early May 1941, HMS Bulldog joined the escort for convoy OB-318, a group of 38 merchant ships bound for North America. The convoy had departed Liverpool on May 2nd, initially protected by the 7th Escort Group. Three days later, Bulldog and her fellow ships of the 3rd Escort Group, including the destroyers HMS Broadway and HMS Amazon, the corvette HMS Abrisha, and several other vessels sailed from Iceland to take over the responsibility of protecting the convoy as it sailed through the perilous waters of the North Atlantic, where U-boat activity was at its peak. Among the German submarines prowling the Atlantic was U-110, a Type 9B U-boat commanded by the experienced and somewhat notorious Captain Lieutenant Fritz Julius Lemp. Lemp had already made a name for himself earlier in the war, when, as the commander of U-30, he controversially sank the passenger liner SS Athenia on the very first day of hostilities. On April 15, 1941, 
U-110 left Lorient, France, on her second patrol. After sinking the British merchant ship Henri Mori on April 29th, just over a week later, Lemp received interesting news. Fellow U-boat U-94 had detected convoy OB-318 east of Cape Farewell, Greenland, destroying two ships on May 7th before being chased off by Bulldog, Amazon, and the sloop HMS Rochester. Now, U-110 found herself as one of six German submarines perfectly positioned to continue what U-94 had started. On the morning of May 9th, in an unusual move, Limp coordinated with another nearby U-boat, U-201, to launch a daring joint attack. U-110 would make a submerged assault from ahead, while U-201 would strike from the rear. The convoy, despite the heightened alert, following U-94's earlier attack, was caught off guard. U-110 fired her first torpedoes, successfully striking cargo ships Esmond and Bengor Head. Limp, emboldened by his success, prepared to fire on a third target. But the Allied escorts were quick to respond. HMS Aubrecia detected U-110's periscope cutting through the waves and immediately sprang into action, alerting the other escorts and charging towards the last known position of the U-boat. The hunters had now become the hunted. U-110 quickly found herself facing a relentless assault from Aubrecia and Broadway. Several depth charges scored direct hits, severely damaging the U-boat. Lemp, realizing the grave danger, ordered an emergency dive. But with water pouring in and systems failing, he had no choice but to surface. As U-110 broke through the waves, her crew scrambled onto the deck. HMS Broadway initially shaped the course to ram, but instead fired two more depth charges beneath the U-boat, hoping to force the crew to abandon ship before they could scuttle her. The plan worked. Lemp, seeing no other option, gave the order. The German sailors poured onto the deck, only to come under fire from Bulldog and Broadway. The British, believing the U-boat's deck gun might be used, opened fire. Several Germans fell, victims of gunfire or drowning in the chaos, as they desperately dived into the cold Atlantic. Captain Lieutenant Limp, realizing that U-110 was not sinking as quickly as he had thought, attempted to swim back, knowing full well that there was top-secret material on board that needed to be destroyed before it fell into Allied hands. However, he was never to be seen again. A German eyewitness later claimed Lemp was shot in the water by a British sailor, but his fate remains unconfirmed. Meanwhile, Captain Baker Cresswell was determined not to waste the rare opportunity to capture a German submarine and anything of value that might be on board, initiating what was called Operation Primrose. As Bulldog approached the U-boat, 20-year-old sub-lieutenant David Baum was tasked with leading the boarding party. His orders were clear, to retrieve any documents, books, charts, and wireless settings. It was a daunting mission. As Baum and his men approached U-110 in Bulldog's whaler, they were acutely aware of the dangers. The U-boat could sink at any moment. It might even be booby-trapped or contain German sailors still hiding inside, waiting to ambush them. The threat of chlorine gas from damaged batteries only added to their peril. Baum was the first to climb aboard the submarine. With his revolver drawn, he descended into the U-boat's interior, ready to take on any survivors who might try to make a last-minute defense of the submarine. Yet the scene that greeted him was eerily quiet. Not a single German remained on board. Baum and his team found the boat clean and well-kept, with food still on the table. As the men ventured deeper into the bowels of the submarine, their hearts raced with anticipation. Each compartment they explored yielded new treasures, waterlogged documents, intricate charts, and leather-bound code books. But the most significant find was yet to come. In the radio room, telegraphist Alan Long discovered an unusual device that looked like a typewriter, but functioned differently. Recognizing its potential importance, Baum ordered it to be removed. Though they didn't realize it at the time, this was the famous Enigma machine the heart of German naval communications. Alongside the Enigma, they found the equally crucial Kurt Signal codebook containing the short signal codes 
used by U-boats for rapid communication. Together, these items would prove instrumental in breaking German naval codes. Baum and his team faced a new challenge. U-110 was badly damaged and taking on water at a rapid rate. They urgently needed to get the Enigma machine back to HMS Bulldog and salvage as much material as possible before the submarine sank. Every second counted as the men frantically grabbed what they could. The submarine lurched violently, threatening to plunge into the abyss. Meanwhile, the men were also acutely aware that other German submarines might be in the area, ready to attack at any moment. Baum barked orders over the cacophony of rushing water and creaking metal, urging his team to work faster. As the water rose past their knees, then their waists, the men of HMS Bulldog pushed themselves to the limit for over six hours, determined to wrest every possible secret from the dying U-boat. As the crew returned to HMS Bulldog, they attempted to take U-110 in tow, hoping to bring the submarine back to Britain. However, the damage was too severe. Despite their best efforts, U-110 sank the following day while under tow. But by then, the most valuable prizes, the Enigma machine, the Kutsignal codebook, and other important documents were safely on board HMS Bulldog, along with 32 captured U-110 crew members. The victorious destroyer steamed towards Britain, her decks laden with the invaluable spoils of war. Captain Baker Cresswell, acutely aware of the significance of their cargo, maintained absolute radio silence to prevent any hint of the capture from reaching German ears. The destroyer first made port in Iceland to refuel, the Enigma machine and codebooks secured under constant guard. On May 12th, Bulldog arrived at Scapa Flow in the Orkney Islands, where she was met by a team of intelligence officers eagerly awaiting her precious cargo. The Enigma machine, along with the codebooks and other captured materials, was swiftly transferred to a waiting plane. Within hours, these priceless artifacts arrived in Bletchley Park, the quiet Buckinghamshire town which provided the central site for British codebreakers during World War II. There, brilliant minds, led by mathematician Alan Turing, worked feverishly to exploit the captured Enigma machine and codebooks. Their efforts soon bore fruit as they cracked the German Navy's Heimisch cipher used for U-boat communications in the Atlantic. This breakthrough allowed the Allies to decipher German naval messages, revealing crucial intelligence about U-boat positions and plans. The impact was swift and dramatic. Allied convoys could now be routed around known U-boat patrol lines, and shipping losses plummeted from 432,000 tons in June to less than 80,000 tons by August, dealing a severe blow to the German naval strategy. The capture of U-110's Enigma machine and the subsequent breaking of German naval codes was one of the most closely guarded secrets of World War II. If the Germans discovered that their codes had been compromised, they would undoubtedly change their entire encryption system, nullifying the Allied advantage. To maintain secrecy, extraordinary measures were taken. The crew of HMS Bulldog were sworn to silence, and even U-110's captured crew members interned at Camp 23, a POW camp in Northern Ontario, Canada, were kept isolated to prevent any word of the capture from spreading. When Sub-Lieutenant Baum was presented with the Distinguished Service Cross by King George VI for his role in the capture of the Enigma machine, the ceremony was deliberately kept low-key to avoid attracting attention. It is reported that the monarch even apologized to Baum for not being able to award him a higher honor for security reasons. The level of secrecy was such that even high-ranking Allied leaders were kept in the dark. President Franklin D. Roosevelt was not informed of the capture until January 1942, and Prime Minister Winston Churchill finally shared the secret with him. The capture was not publicly acknowledged for decades after the war. The capture of U-110's Enigma machine and Kurt's Signal codebook had consequences that reached far beyond the war years. The work done at Bletchley Park to crack these codes laid the foundation for modern computer science and cryptography. Alan Turing's groundbreaking work on the Bomba machine, designed to crack Enigma codes faster, paved the way for the development of early computers. 
The need to process vast amounts of data quickly and accurately drove innovations in electronic calculation and data storage. Moreover, the lessons learned from breaking Enigma influenced post-war cryptography. The understanding that no encryption system is unbreakable led to the development of more sophisticated coding techniques, and paradoxically, to greater emphasis on frequently changing codes and encryption methods. The Enigma story also had a profound impact on international relations and intelligence sharing. The close cooperation between Britain and American codebreakers during the war set the stage for ongoing intelligence partnerships in the post-war era. In the realm of military strategy, the Enigma capture underscored the critical importance of signals intelligence. It demonstrated that in modern warfare, information could be as valuable as firepower, influencing military doctrine for decades to come. Lastly, when the story finally became public in the 1970s, it captured the imagination of the public, spawning numerous books, films, and documentaries. The tale of Enigma has become a testament to the power of human ingenuity and the often unsung heroes who can change the course of history from behind the scenes. <laughs>